Lakes is the one they all want to win. And last year, it was the first ever victory for the superb four-wheel drive Peugeot 205, driven by Finland's Ari Vartan. We didn't have any problems at all, so it was trouble free run. And the um, car was very good indeed, and it is very good. And so I'm sure that car will have a bright future. And how right he was. Sadly, Ari's in hospital, recovering well from his colossal crash in the Argentine. But as the Peugeot team prepare for the world's most spectacular rally, they do so knowing they virtually clinch the manufacturer's championship after six wins from eight events. But not if Audi can stop them. Without a world championship win this year, they've brought a few bits to Finland to try to regain their lost glory with a new car, their latest four-wheel drive Quattro, a sort of Formula One rally car with more spoilers than last year's Ferrari. Dismal prospects for the three-day, 900-mile race through the forests, where men are men and where Finland's Timo Salonen, four times a winner in his first year with Peugeot, can become this year's world champion if he does well here. It's not nice weather for feeling, but I think so, and we have good, good chance. Our car is good on a little bit slippery road, and, but feeling is, of course, not so nice to drive in wet condition. How are the, the wings and things going to be affected by the yumps, uh, you know? No, it's no problem. No problem? No. Our car is very good now on, on jump, jumps. Marku Allen's another top fin, but what about the weather? <laughs> weather is not so nice in Lancia now, but I hope it's coming better. Is the forecast good? Well, you know, in, uh, I hope tomorrow, but like today, it's very bad in, in condition like this in Lancia. It's going to make your chances even worse then, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah, much, you know, in, I have in yesterday good chance, and also two days ago, but now in raining like this is difficult, very difficult. Marku, are you, are you disappointed you haven't got your four-wheel drive car yourself? Yeah, that's my biggest problem. A little bit boring now. When are you going to get it, do you think? I hope in your country, in England, in, in the first in RIC. Something for us to look forward to. But, brilliant as he is, four times Thousand Lakes winner Marcus at a disadvantage to the Peugeots and Audis in his two-wheel drive Lancia. And right from the start, in appalling weather, Allen's going for it in inspired form, compensating with sheer brilliance for his car's comparative lack of traction. With so much at stake, Timo Salonen was taking it comparatively easily in the early stages, but nimble Peugeot slowed by a faulty damper. But in the new Audi, the turbo wastegate chirruping open and shut, world champion Stieg Blomqvist was charging as only he can, after that elusive first Audi major win of the year. Stage one, Henry Toivonen works Lancia, back in rallying after a four-month injury layoff. Off! Deep in the ditch. Try reverse. No good. So it's spectator power to the rescue. Hands, arms, bodies everywhere. Pushing, pulling, tugging and twisting the Lancia and multiplying the impact damage. All brake balance in rear. So it didn't uh, break from the front at all. I was panicking like hell when that happened. I mean, that. You know, it was not very good time for uh, such a moment because uh, I haven't driven in four or five months. And when I noticed that it was all in the rear, it didn't, you know, get, didn't slow down at all. I was panicking so much that I, I just couldn't get anything from my head, you know, what to do. Only one thing to do, Henry. Co-driver back in the car, smashed front and all, two and a half minutes lost. Motor on to the service halt, get it fixed and drive on. There's still another 49 stages. And seven times winner Hanu Mikola's in trouble too. Look at his Audi Quattro. Rear wing off, side smashed in, the downforce that means so much to the new Audi gone and the handling with it. But still in fourth place and professional that he is, Hanu races on as though on ice to get his car fixed.
while behind Hanu, an astounding fifth, it's Safari Rally winner Yuha Kankanen in his two-wheel drive Toyota Celica Turbo. Astounding because special though it may be, the Toyota's much more like a normal road car than anything ahead of it. Number eight, sixth in the rally, Britain's favourite Swede, the bearded Per Eklund in his nearly normal Audi Quattro, hoping that reliability will make up for the power of the works cars ahead of him. And Henry's back. New front on the rebuilt Lancia, but handling like a crab. Toivonen's made a fool of himself, and somehow he's got to make amends. One o'clock in the morning, 200 miles gone, Marku Allen leaves. Marku, how's it gone for you today? Very difficult, but it's coming not too bad, but in uh, very slippery, very, very slippery. I, I believe you're leading, though. Huh? You're leading, I think. Yeah. By how much, Marco? I don't know. Ten seconds, about. So the, so the slipperiness is the four-wheel drive has not been an advantage then. You were worried before the start. Maybe I'm super drivers. Super indeed. Alain leads brilliantly in the Lancia, but only seven seconds behind him, world championship leader Timo Salonen. Good practice. Only one problem in in Onim for the Pesia stage. The left front shock up so broken and... Uh, we lost some time, but, but otherwise everything working well. So if you hadn't been there for that, you probably would be leading now, would you? I'm quite sure because we lost 12 seconds to Marco and we did quite slowly this stage. So tomorrow you will soon be able to catch him, do you think? One of his start, yes. It's continually airborne in the wet and muddy conditions. Well, that weather's cleared up a little bit now. And Murray Walker, the English commentator who recently was in Adelaide for the inaugural Grand Prix race, will describe the situation at his articulate best in this rally they call the Thousand Lakes. Saturday, 7.30 a.m. and now it's fine and dry as Allen starts the second leg. 170 miles and eight stages by lunchtime with Salonen behind him in a now completely fit Persian. dilemma. Play safe and be sure of vital world championship points or go hard for a win and risk retirement. But Timo's a thin. This is the Thousand Lakes and that's the ultimate. So wins. A popping, chirruping Audi and only third, 19 seconds down with gearbox problems. Even the brakes are crying. And Hanu Mikola's in trouble. His Audi rear end's been rebuilt, but look, that brake cooling water's mixed with engine smoke. Blasting on in the Duckham's Toyota, it's Kankanen, but not for much further. Flat out into a rock doesn't improve your back axle. And that moves Pekka Eklund up a place, sixth to fifth in the private Audi Quattro. Another doughty drive. So, sixth now, it's one of the greatest of them all, the towering, talented Swede Bjorn Valdegard, who's won practically everything there is to win. Kankanen's Toyota out, but Valdegard's Toyota going strong. But the battles between a Lancia and a Peugeot. The Lancia of Henry Toivonen recovering brilliantly from his first stage catastrophe and the Peugeot of Kali Grundl deputising for the injured Ari Vatanen. Like Toivonen, Grundl went off in stage one and like Henry, he's moving up. But his teammate Salonen in the lead seems to be in trouble. Co-driver Seppo Haja. Do you have a problem here? Oh, uh, it's... well, yes, maybe. Well, what is it? Uh, the engine doesn't uh, run very well after 7,000. I don't know what it is. How long has it been doing that? For two stages now. It started on the, not the last one, the one before. Has it cost you much time? Well, you never can tell those things. You're still in the lead, though, are you? Yes, yes. New plugs and ignition pack restore the Peugeot revs as Henry Toivonen, now seventh, arrives at the service point. And how's it going after the ditch-digging episode? We have had it. 
still problems with the chassis because the chassis was bent. Bend and uh, now it doesn't turn very well to the left and it's uh, going quite a lot sideways to the right. So, As a result of that? Yeah. Oh dear. So we are both sort of 80%, the and car and, and myself. It also yeah. jarred the back as well, obviously. Well, uh, obviously, yes. It's a bit stiff now. But anyway, you're, you're still on the rally. And so's Timo Salonen at the rally's only tarmac stage. The traditional two-kilometre blast through the streets of Yavaskala. The new Audi may be overweight, but Blomqvist's delighted with the improved handling and it shows. He's holding his second place ahead of Alain's Lancia, but even Stig's having to give best to Salonen. Marco Allen is inspired. This is his rally, and he's driving at 11 tenths. Bitterly disappointed at not getting the promised four-wheel drive Lancia Delta, but only a minute behind Salonen in third place. Hanno Mikola, six fastest stages in the Audi and second here, but out soon. Look at that smoke. <laughs> But Toivonen's going faster and faster, almost spinning out at Javeskala in his efforts to retrieve his early mistake and stave off Calais Grundle. And here is Grundle, an amazing drive, fastest on the tarmac stage, and that's with a completely rejigged front suspension rebuilt to compensate for his bent chassis. In the Toyota Celica Turbo, Valdegard's eighth now, Salonen leads, Blomqvist second, Allen third, Mikola fourth, Eklund fifth, Toivonen sixth, and Grundle seventh. But the man of the rally is Timo Salonen, and the car of the rally is his Peugeot 205. For if he stays where he is, this will be his fifth win of the year. A win that will make him world champion, and Peugeot the constructors champion. For Trias Stig Blomkos May, he's destined not to win and break the Peugeot mould. For overheating brakes, loss of turbo pressure, and the gearbox problem are blunting his edge. But he sure is trying. And so is Marku Allen. He's hurling the pretty Lancia through the stages, still third, and that'll be his best finish of the year. But look at Grundle. Finish in the top six was his brief, and now he's fourth after a superb recovery. Grundle fourth, Toivonen down to fifth, but now there's only seconds in it for Henry is charging. Eklund sixth, top privateer, and another copybook performance from the Swede who couldn't drive badly if he tried. So with Valdegard seventh in the Toyota, it is, as ever, Scandinavians in all the top places as the Thousand Lakes nears its end. There's no other rally in the world that offers the challenge of the Thousand Lakes, and Timo Salonen's almost home and dry, coasting by his brilliant standards to win it for the first time after dominating from the second lane. And with rumours of joining a new team next year, Stig Blomqvist soldiers on in the Audi for his third second place of the year. Poor as far as he's concerned as world champion. And now Marku Allen. For despite two-wheel drive, he's finishing third in the Lancia. Here's to the RAC rally and the four-wheel drive Delta though. But who's going to be fourth? Number one, Grundle, seconds ahead of Toivonen here in his Peugeot. Or Toivonen in the Lancia. If only he hadn't had that off in the very first stage, but then Grundle could say the same. And Toivonen's gaining on the Peugeot. Sure enough, 
enough, Grundle finishes fifth. But he's retrieved his honour, he's finished in the top six, and that's exactly what he was told to do. Journey's end. The finish ramp at the Rantasipi Hotel, and Salonen's there. There with his co-driver, Seppo Hajan, to win the Thousand Lakes, the World Championship, the Constructors' Championship for Peugeot, the hero worship of his fellow Finns, and a million-dollar future.